Okay, I started with a blank project here, and we're going to take a look at plugins and dependencies. Plugins are something that's new for 5.0, version 5.0, and they just blow the roof off what's possible. We've got plugins available at our site for advanced functionality like databases and creating catalogs at runtime, and uh, we encourage you to go there and download the free trials of those and try them out. Some of them are even free. Some of them are reasonably priced, but we encourage you to check it out. For now, just to get started, we're going to start with the most basic type of plugin, a shape plugin. So we'll go to Insert, Plugin Objects, Shape. So we're going to click on that, and in the resulting dialog here, we're going to click on Properties. This allows us to control what type of shape we make and what color it is with the outline too. So we're going to go ahead and click on Rounded Rectangle, and we'll leave the corner width and corner height at 7, or actually, let's jack them up a little. We'll put them up to 12. And from the stroke area here, we'll change the width to 3. And maybe we'll switch the color here to a dark red. And in the fill area, we're going to go ahead and select a lighter red. Okay, so when we click OK, we're going to create a shape that's going to be a rounded rectangle with a corner radius of 12 pixels and it's going to have a dark red outline of 3 pixels and a red fill on the inside. So let's press OK and I'm just going to point out also here the About button. You can go ahead and find out about any plugin here in this area. Find out if it's an official plugin or who the publisher, publisher is, etc. and access the plugin help. So let's press OK. Actually, let's take a quick look at the plugin help and you can see that there's extensive help available for these plugins. It's in a format that matches with the rest of the help system and it's actually integrated into the help system. If you're setting up one of the custom actions for the shape object, you'll actually find the link in there, uh, find more about this action link. So that's very handy. So we're going to close that down and we're going to press OK on this screen actually and press OK again to check out our shape. Okay, so this is the shape we created in our properties tab. If we want to, we can resize it, move it around and do a variety of things. We can double click it at any time to go back and edit the properties in the plugin properties area here. Let's say if we wanted to have a rounder corner, we could go back and change this to 25 and maybe a slightly thicker border of 5 pixels. I'll press OK. I'll press OK. As you can see it's increased the border and it's made it nice and round for us. So this is a great way to click, a uh, great way to create quick buttons and title bars for example and icons, let's say if we shrink it a bit, and stuff like that. It's very handy, lightweight on the file size and once you get advanced, you can actually duplicate them and create advanced button bars pretty quick. But anyway, we're going to delete this now and take a quick look at the dependencies feature. So if we go under Project, Dependencies, we're presented with this dialog. Now one of the strengths of Autoplay Media Studio, actually probably the biggest strength, is that you're able to integrate all types of media content. It's a multimedia application. So if you're going to serve Macromedia Flash content, for example, you would like some way to find out if they have that control installed, so the software to play back your Flash, and if not, present them with a friendly message and a download link. And that's what dependencies do. You can check this area here, um, check the checkbox for Macromedia Flash, and then down in the Properties area, there you can see there's a variety of information and options for you to customize. For example, you can set the minimum version. If you would like to set your minimum version to 5, you can do that here. 4, 6, any version you like. If your flash content is a couple years old, you might want to set this low to whatever minimum version it is. For example, version 4, to save people from seeing this message and this download link if they only have version 5 installed, for example. So set it for the minimum version uh, for your content. And the same goes for all of these. For example, if you have QuickTime content that's version 5, you would want to set the, the minimum version uh, here to be version 5. Okay? And as you can see, they've covered all the standard file types here. QuickTime, RealPlayer, Windows Media, etc. Adobe PDF, 
um, Microsoft Excel and PowerPoint and you can basically customize this for whatever you have in your project so if you're serving PowerPoint you're going to want to come in here and click on the PowerPoint option and make sure that you've gotten some kind of option for them to get a free player if they don't have one installed and the last thing we'll look at in here is the dialog tab in here you can actually set your um, custom dialog options for example a window title message that you wish to serve um, text for your buttons and if you like you can even show a help button and you can give a custom link here to an HTML file this is particularly handy because if you're asking people to install software a lot of times they're going to want to know why and this allows you to customize it and say it in your own words and basically um, shape this message to your brand or to your strategy so let's press OK and basically that's it for this lesson. I hope you guys are comfortable adding a shape plugin object now and uh, requiring dependencies for your content such as Macromedia Flash and QuickTime movies.